and welcome to the Enterprise Cloud, Cisco Intersight Kubernetes Service, or IKS, and Portworx Data Services, PDS. Today's awesome webinar is sponsored by Pure Storage and produced by Actual Tech Media. My name is Jess Steinbach with Actual Tech Media, and I am absolutely thrilled to be your moderator for this discussion. Today, we're basically talking about speed, nonstop, always accelerating speed because that seems to be at the core of our world. I mean, globally and, and especially in tech, it's both thrilling and exhausting and it never really seems to slow down. And for many organizations, time to value is a make or break factor for ROI and growth, which, make, which makes it even more vital to have the right tools to support this pace. Luckily, we have some incredible experts here with us today from Pure Storage and their featured guests, Cisco and Portworx, who are all going to give you some key insights into how you can enable your organization to deliver modern data services across both on-prem and cloud without compromising speed or consistency. It is going to be a great session and I am so excited to get started. So I'm just gonna zip through a few of the important housekeeping points and get us on our way. First, I want to draw your attention to the question section of your webinar console. Now, the absolute best part of a webinar like this is that chance to ask questions directly of experts like we have with us here today. And I know that this topic is going to get all your inquisitive minds racing, so make sure to get those questions in. And if we are unable to get to your question in the live session, don't worry. The teams will be following up with you after the event. A quick reminder that the question console is also a great place to say hi and to reach out to the actual tech media team. If you have any technical issues during the session, knock on wood, of course, don't forget that a browser refresh should get rid of any of the usual tech gremlins. But if not, don't worry about it. Just shoot a message in that questions tab and, and our team will be there to help you out. Okay, so skipping along to that handout section, it's the tab right next to the questions tab that you were just in. You're going to find some exciting content to go along with the webinar today, definitely worth exploring. So click in there, take a little scroll through and download some of that content. You'll also see a link to the Gorilla Guide book club and the actual tech media events calendar. So lots of great resources. Be sure to explore that handout section. And hey, it is not just awesome content that we're giving away today. We also have a $300 Amazon gift card as a prize drawing at the end of our webinar. Now, of course, you must be in attendance during the live webinar to qualify for the prize and all winners must meet the actual tech media prize terms and conditions. If you're not sure what those are, you can find the full T's and C's back in that handout section that we were just chatting about. Just click in there, scroll on down to the bottom and you'll find them in there. Now, I know with this crew, we're not going to need any additional nudging to ask questions, but hey, we like curiosity here. So today we will also be giving away a $50 Amazon gift card to the best question asked. Now, keep in mind that the team is reviewing all of the questions asked after the webinar, which means that even if your question does not get read out in our live Q&A, there is still a chance to win. And as always, we will reach out via email to our lucky winner after the webinar today. Okay, well, I think that is all we have for housekeeping here. So let's get into our session. I am so excited to introduce our expert presenters today. Chris Kennedy, Cloud Architect at Pure Storage, Selesh Bijahali, Product Management, Cloud Native Solutions at Cisco, and Andy Gower, Senior Solutions Marketing Manager at Portworx. I love this combination of humans and companies. It is so cool to see the growth and innovation that comes out of this kind of collaboration. And I know that we have some awesome content to dig into today. So Chris, Celeste, and Andy, I will hand the mic on over to you. All right. Hey, thanks, Jess. Thanks for having us today. We're really excited to be here talking about the enterprise cloud and talking about how to give your developers uh, what they need and really focus on database as a service platform, backup, data management, uh, and more. Um, my name is Andy Gower. I am the group marketing manager here at, at Portworx at Pure Storage. I lead our partner in solutions marketing. And I'm thrilled today to be joined by Chris and Celesh, uh, who are going to talk a little bit more about the Cisco and Portwork solutions and how we are building one big solution together uh, to help you be successful in production on Kubernetes. Uh, and to that end, you know, the foundation of everything we're talking about today is really about containers and Kubernetes and how they're growing, how they're quickly becoming the de facto standard for global businesses. As you see here on the screen, you know, 85% of global businesses will be running containers in production by 2025. 95% of new applications are being developed in containers. 
and Kubernetes is growing faster than ever before. And what this is driving is a new stack that enterprises are, are building, one that can harness the power of Kubernetes and the power of containers. But as they start to move into production applications, into stateful applications, there are a number of things that become more difficult. You see some of the things here that customers require to be in production, backup and restore, data mobility, HA, multi-cloud, encryption. And they frequently struggle with many of these same things, mobility, HA, capacity management, backup and restore. And so what we need to do is create a solution that not only provides us the foundation for production applications, but also provides the data management and data services you need to be successful. And so to that end, I'm gonna turn it over to Celeste now to talk about how Cisco is building that foundation with InterSight Kubernetes service for those production applications. Celeste, over to you. Thank you, Andy. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks for handing out to me. Um, my name is Silesh. I am the product manager for uh, InterSight Kubernetes service, basically cloud native solutions. Before I get into uh, Kubernetes service, I want to start off with the hybrid cloud and the manageability aspect of it. We clearly know that uh, uh, the hybrid cloud is a very complex beast. It's tough to manage. So the IT admins are always struggling for the tools and make it easy, uh, make it uh, faster to operationalize and so on and so forth. For various reasons, there are various locations now with uh, the hybrid cloud, you start with data center, you have the branch office, you have the edge, and then you have various providers to talk about, which is the AWS, uh, um, Azure, GCP, Oracle, and then you need to worry about infrastructure, uh, whether it's compute, storage, network, and network can include LAN, WAN, SD-WAN, so on and so forth, and of course, various hypervisors and on top of that, the IT admins also worry about the applications on top of that, uh, where it can run an on-prem, some of them on the cloud and so on and so forth. So as you can see, the entire IT environment is extremely complex to manage. This is where Cisco InterSight comes into uh, being, which is what exactly is Cisco InterSight? It's a, a SaaS-based cloud operations platform along with services. When we say SaaS-based, essentially it means nothing to install, nothing to uh, upgrade. All you have to do is log into intersite.cisco.com, have the appropriate licenses, and you're good to go. When we talk about cloud operations platform, it's the capabilities not only to manage your on-prem, which a uh, long time ago used to be just UCS and Hyperflex, and that's expanded, and also, uh, the cloud operations platform now supports uh, cloud, uh, public cloud, Azure, uh, AWS, and so on and so forth. This is the infrastructure layer. On top of it, we have various services, which is the topic of today's uh, discussion, including uh, InterSight Kubernetes service. So I wanted to lay that foundation and then get into the cloud native architecture. Traditionally, if you look at it, uh, uh, architectures were three tier. We used to start off with web server, and then you have the applications with appropriate modules, and the backend is database. All that is changing with cloud native because of containers. Everything is being containers uh, containerized with microservices. So now how do you, if you have a big environment and so many containers, how do you manage this? That's where Kubernetes comes into being, which is the orchestration and management layer. Now, for, for the, uh, the entire containers to be built, you need a build server, and then you need to host that, which means you need a container registry and so on and so forth. As you can see, the complexity is starting to increase. And on the right-hand side, uh, what uh, uh, I'm talking about here is those challenges for our IT admins when it comes to Kubernetes deployment. It takes a long time to deploy. Even before that, you need to choose which Kubernetes flavor do you want to uh, uh, invest in. That itself is, is a challenge. And then Kubernetes does not provide other capabilities. So you need to worry about networking, you need to worry about storage, monitoring, logging, and so on and so forth. That's all on the day zero challenges. Then you need to worry about uh, day two and beyond, which includes upgrades and so on and so forth. And a lot of uh, this is uh, you know, open source, so support becomes an issue. 
So um, this is from our customers, what they have been talking about. Uh, in parallel, Gartner did a, a survey uh, on the left-hand side, you see that where they kind of went back and talked to the customers and there's various challenges, uh, lack of skill resource, operational complexity, security concerns, to name a few. So, so what exactly is the customer looking for from a solution point of view? They need it to be fully automated, which means minimal skill required to address the lack of skilled resources. And then it needs to be delivered as a service, which basically means make it easy for me, easy to use. And then of course the security concerns is in the top three, then you need curated and secured images. Uh, this is where IKS comes into being. So what exactly is IKS, which is the InterSight Kubernetes service? It's fully automated, delivered as a service. Those are the two key components of that. This takes away all the challenges for the Kubernetes administrator. The three points I want to highlight is on the right-hand side, it's 100% upstream. What does that mean? That means you don't have to worry that any of this has been customized. It's all 100% upstream. In case you move away from IKS, you don't have to worry about migrations. Then. On top of that, you have the validated out-of-box container interfaces like the Calico networking for load balancing like Metal LB. And then we have logging, monitoring, and service mesh, which has its own UI to do you know, policy-based uh, networking uh, within the container uh, environment itself. So this is a, a snapshot of it. So what the key value add here is, it simplifies not only day zero, but day end of the Kubernetes deployment. And then you, you get various options in terms of hypervisors, storage, and also bare metal. So there are a lot of other uh, webinars which double clicks into IKS, but this is the key value add. I wanted to highlight why this makes it very simple for our administrators uh, and makes it fully automated and easy to deploy. So who is it for? Any customer who is looking to modernize the applications and, and, and deploy it anywhere, this is the key uh, solution. It's SaaS delivered, uh, that's what they're looking for, easy to use. It's multi-cloud and also AI workloads can run on it. Now, this has been well received by our customers, and uh, it, but what the customers are now coming back is, what do we do on top of it? Can we run applications, particularly the stateful applications like database? And for this, uh, I want to ask Andy uh, if you can uh, tell us uh, what Portworx is doing to make it easy that complements IKS uh, from a fully automated solution. How does it make it simple for our customers to run a database on top of it? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And, and you know, I'm going to hand it over to Chris in a second to go in a little more detail, but, you know, you talked about a, a lot of great things in terms of orchestration and, and management of the application, that initial layer for building uh, production applications uh, with Kubernetes and containers. But there's a whole uh, there's a whole section on data and data management that you have to consider, especially as you bring these stateful workloads into production. And that's the piece where Portworx really comes to play to help uncomplicate that data management, uncomplicate those data services, and help you automate that same automation you provide at the top of the stack at the bottom of the stack with data and data management. Uh, so with that, Chris, I'll turn it over to you here to talk a little bit more about what Portworx is doing on that front. Sure, and I uh, really appreciate it, Andy. And Celeste, that was a great overview of Intersight. Um, I'm really excited about this partnership. So my name's Chris Kennedy. I am a cloud native architect uh, with, with Portworx by Pure Storage. And uh, today, really, I wanna talk to you about what we're doing around that data management. So we built that foundation of Kubernetes that is orchestrating the applications, handling the, the network plugins and so forth. But ultimately that leaves a lot to be la uh, had in terms of the data management. Things like being able to, you know, do container granular provisioning, encryption, backup recovery, disaster um, recovery, business continuity, all of these things are not covered in Kubernetes. And so what does that mean for the enterprise? Well, enterprises are using these cloud native technologies because they want to speed up their time to market. They want to get their products out the door faster. 
and containerizing and being able to have that abstraction layer is enabling their developers to do that. But their ops teams are coming back and saying, hey, this is great, but how do I provide HA? How do I protect this data? And more importantly, we've got a really small team and you're wanting to stand up hundreds, if not thousands of nodes. How do we make this simpler to manage? And they're expecting the same performance, reliability, security, and all of that, but optimized for Kubernetes in an app-centric way. So that's where Portworx comes in and that's what Portworx provides at the base of the product. So the great thing about Portworx is that it's really a platform and it's a data services platform to ensure all your apps are performant, protected, pro available, secure, no matter where you run them. And I always love this slide because it really speaks to the value of Portworx and that's any, 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 and every. So Portworx in, can run any stateful workload on any Kubernetes distribution in any cloud on any infrastructure, and our team's here to meet you at whatever stage you are at in your container journey. Now, Portworx is made up of kind of six key modules. Uh, PX Store, which kind of provides the in-cluster storage layer, and then we have the rest of this to cover security, PX Secure, um, migration of applications, uh, capacity management through autopilot, disaster recovery, backup, and we'll talk more about those as we go along. But really what it comes down to is Kubernetes and Cisco IKS is providing that app lifecycle management. Portworx is coming in and providing the data lifecycle management, including cloud orchestration. And so ultimately this gives you that complete enterprise cloud platform. Now, we also have another component called Stork, which extends Kubernetes and actually makes it storage aware. And that's how we ensure that performance and that high availability is by being able to know where the volumes are and be able to co-locate the application and volume within the cluster. In a failover scenario, we're, at, we're able to very quickly um, recover and recover the application on a node that has its data. And these are all things that are enhancements above and beyond what is typically available in Kubernetes delivered through just a CSI driver from your cloud provider or, you know, through your hypervisor. Um, you know, CSI covers giving you volumes but it doesn't really handle that data lifecycle management. And that's where Portworx comes in. So once we lay that together with Cisco Intersight, it really is a compelling story because now you've got a single pane of glass to manage your compute infrastructure, no matter where it lives, and then a single data management solution to allow data mobility between those infrastructures. And then on top of that, we can layer in PX Backup. PX Backup is unique in that it was built for Kubernetes. A lot of vendors now, as containers have really started to reach critical mass and, and mass adoption, are trying to um, adopt their legacy technologies to backup Kubernetes. And it just simply can't be done in the same way. So with PX Backup, you get container granular machine-based backups, or container granular backups. Machine-based backups just don't work. You can't backup the host and know that the application is gonna come up. Uh, we're namespace aware. We're able to do application consistent backups because if you recall, I mentioned that we extend the Kubernetes scheduler. Well, that also makes PX backup aware of where all the application pods are running in the cluster. So when you have a distributed database like uh, Cassandra or Kafka, then we're able to capture all those pods at the same time. And we get both the application, the data, 
and all of the Kubernetes objects. So you're getting a complete backup. You're not having to restore the data and then get go to GitOps and apply the manifests and hope your volumes match up. This is built for Kubernetes and it's optimized for a multi-cloud world. So ultimately what I'm getting at is when you combine Cisco IKS and Portworx Enterprise, then you get a platform that you can confidently run mission critical apps at scale. But that doesn't solve everything. Today, CIOs and uh, IT managers and DevOps are looking to deliver data services to their internal customers to eliminate lock-in, um, to move away from uh, proprietary technologies like cloud provider uh, solutions. But the challenge is, is that the operations teams and the DevOps teams don't have time to be mired in knowing how to deploy and optimize each one of these databases. And so, although your databases run full time, Portworx Database Services is here to help out. It's the very first Kubernetes database as a service platform considering the full life cycle of the application. And it's one platform for any database on any Kubernetes distribution. The nice thing about Portworx data uh, services is that once the administrators have configured it for your uh, company, then you get one click deployment. Today we have support for six data services but we're rapidly expanding that as we get our uh, support team in, up and, and trained. You get a single pane of glass management where you're able to see both what's been deployed, how it's being protected, and metrics and monitoring of that application. You get day two automation. So Portworx is actually taking the, uh, the open source images or the commercial images and we're taking responsibility for those. We're patching them, we're scanning them two, three times a day with multiple different uh, tools. And when we find a vulnerability, through PDS, we're able to notify our customers, not only that we found the, the vulnerability, but then it, that we have a remediation and click here and we'll go ahead and apply that patch, taking care of that day two um, management. GitOps fleet management is incredibly important when you start to talk about scale. I could not even think about deploying 200 clusters without GitOps. And fortunately, PDS is tied right into that workflow. So it is API driven and can be um, set so that, you know, your new clusters are automatically added as soon as they come up. It runs anywhere on any cloud. Um, you can back up to any object store and that it does include our own flash blade. And most importantly, you're going to get gold standard support. So all the support cases are handled by best in class port work support, triaging and working with um, you to ensure that the PDS stack is delivering everything you need. Okay, so now that we've kind of given an overview of what Portworx Data Services is, let's take a look at uh, actually how it works. And we'll have Umer, our uh, product manager responsible for the product, go ahead and share this with us. Thanks, guys. Now, let's see how easy it is to actually deploy a database using PDS. I'm going to sign into the PDS dashboard. I'll pick Postgres for this example. All I really need to do is provide a name, this thing demo, pick a backing Kubernetes cluster and namespace. Let's see what the default configuration is here. It'll create a PDS database. I could pick a t-shirt size. I'm just going to go with small in this case. I'll leave it just at one node. I can scale this out later. And if I wanted to, I could schedule backups, but I'll leave it. I'll leave it without any backups around. And that's it. Click deploy. And we've got a database that's being deployed. See, it takes only a few seconds for it to come up. Now I have a running database, Postgres database. And check the status. See, it's all healthy. Go grab the endpoints that my application would need. 
use to connect, including the password. All right, so now that we have this deployed, let's go ahead and take a backup. We don't have any data in here, but just to prove the point, we can go ahead and take an ad hoc backup of this database. And because there's no data, it should only take a few seconds to complete. See, it's running now. Did it take a second? There you go. We've got a back backup of this Postgres database without any data. And let's go ahead and scale this out now. We only had one pod running, but now let's add a streaming replica. Again, this should only take a few seconds because it's running in, in Kubernetes. And there you have it. We now have, we now have it, two nodes in our Postgres cluster, one streaming replica. And one last thing, let's go ahead and check out some of the metrics that we're capturing. We've got Kubernetes metrics, Portworx metrics, and application metrics. And there you have it. We've deployed a database, taken a backup, scaled it out all in less than two minutes. Well, and Selesh, Andy, I don't know about you guys, but Thanks. when I think about the automation available through Cisco IKS and the Intersight platform on top of the data mobility that Portworx Enterprise brings and protection and day two operations. When you layer on one click deployment of databases and I can get my op ops team onto something more important, I don't know about you guys, but I think that's pretty exciting. Extremely exciting and, and hey, Two minutes. I just want to emphasize that whole demo was two minutes, and we weren't speeding it up. So uh, you know that's that's something to to hang your hat on. We're 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 putting our money where our mouth is when we say get your DevOps teams focused on building, not on managing. Um, so yeah, with that, you know, really appreciate everyone joining us today. Um, uh, hopefully, you've been asking questions throughout. If not, we are happy to take some questions now. Uh, talk a little more about what we're doing uh, with with Cisco and Portworx together. Uh, and uh, thanks again for joining us and uh, we'll take your questions now. Wow, thank you to Chris, Selesh, and to Andy for that wonderful presentation. I wish we could keep going, but we are just completely out of time. So we will have to wrap up there, but hopefully we can pick this up uh, in another conversation, another webinar again soon, because there's just a lot of great information here. Until then, I know what you are all waiting for. So let's get to it. Now, a, a reminder in this prize giveaway that you must be in live attendance here at the webinar to win. So today's winner, of a $300 Amazon gift card is Austin Taylor of Ohio. Austin Taylor of Ohio, you have won a $300 Amazon gift card. Congratulations. And as always, we will be in touch about claiming your prize after the webinar today. And with that, on behalf of the Actual Tech Media team, I want to thank Pure Storage and their special guests from Cisco and Portworx for making this event possible. And just a giant thank you to Chris, Selesh, and Andy for an absolutely fascinating presentation today. And hey, as always, sending huge high fives and special thank yous to all of you out there in the audience today for attending, for asking some awesome questions. These events are honestly so exciting to be a part of because they give us a chance to, to connect, to explore these ideas together. Now, I know I've learned a ton. I hope you did too. I cannot wait to see you all again. So until then, have an absolutely beautiful rest of your day.